A Reuters Ipsos poll found that about 53% of registered voters in rural areas approved of Trump as of last month. Farm Journal found that some 70% of farmers had voted for Trump and 52% found him favorable as of August. However, 61% of farmers under 45 favored the president while only 40% over 65 did. Overall in the U.S., 55% of voters over the age of 55 supported Trump in 2016, according to the Reuters, Ipsos 2016 Election Day poll. Only 30% of voters under 24 and 38% of those aged 25 to 34 voted for the president. Democrats, who have high hopes to win back control of the U.S. House of Representatives, see the changing tide in the farm belt as possibly boosting their chances in areas that Trump won in 2016 but are now seen as toss-ups. They would need to gain at least 23 of the House's 435 seats to have a majority in the chamber, which would enable them to block at least part of Trump's agenda. Recapturing the Senate is considered far more difficult. Two of the four House races in Iowa, the top corn-producing state, are considered up for grabs. Democrat Abby Finkenauer has been hitting the trade issue hard as she vies to oust Trump ally and U.S. Representative Rod Bloom in one of the districts. In Kansas, the nation's top wheat-producing state, the Kansas Farm Board, took the unusual step of declining to endorse a candidate for governor after Republicans nominated staunch Trump ally Chris Kobach. Another year ORC political divisions are prompting debates in Republican farm families like that of Donald Shex Nader, 57, who farms corn with his two brothers in Louisiana. I have one brother who's not sure about the president, and the other that is very sure that what he is doing is right, Shex Nader said. Trump backs Florida's Republican candidates ahead of midterms. The Trump administration has tried to sweeten its relationship with farmers in recent months with a $6 billion farm aid package meant to compensate them for markets that were lost due to the trade wars. Farmers started receiving checks in September, and the U.S. Agriculture Department has promised more aid for the end of the year. Last month, Trump, who has embraced an America First policy aimed at boosting jobs and reducing U.S. trade deficits, promised to expand domestic sales of corn-based ethanol, a key market for Iowa farmers. Fears that other markets could be lost also eased after the trilateral trade deal signed by the United States, Canada and Mexico on October 1. U.S. corn and dairy farmers, in particular, had fretted about the prospect of a North American trade war. Nevertheless, a study by economists at Purdue University in Illinois this week showed the retaliatory tariffs imposed by Canada and Mexico during the trade negotiations would cause U.S. agricultural exports to decline by at least $1.8 billion annually, outweighing market access improvements it said were worth $450 million. U.S. farmers, however, remain most worried about trade with China, which last year bought 60% of U.S. soy and has virtually halted purchases this year. He probably should have gotten Mexico and Canada, get that deal done and then went after China, said Kurt Mether, a 63-year-old corn and soybean farmer in Iowa, referring to Trump. Mather said he had voted for Trump and would vote Republican next week, partly because of alignment on social issues like abortion, but added that he could reevaluate Trump ahead of the 2020 presidential election. We'll be willing to put up with him for a while, I'd say another year or so. If he doesn't get the negotiations turned around by the time he himself is up for election, then we'll definitely reassess, Mather said. Reuters